I'm going to need your prayers for those of you that are watching this, even if it's just one of you. Any prayer I can get, I take. I, I've been having those two take. Let me back up. I went to the dental office, true story. I went to the dental office to get my teeth cleaned. I think it was January. And um, you call him the doctor, the dentist, right? The lady, the dentist. She was a heavy set Latina woman, probably in her 50s. And don't think I'm putting them down because I actually fell in love with one like that, right? Latino, heavy set in her 50s. Hi, Nay. Anyways, let's not get off track here. I went in there to get my teeth cleaned. And I have, to go, I have to go to the dentist again because I'm having a toothache. From a filling they put in, it's killing me the last two weeks. And I'm going to explain why I think it's possible that they're using technology to make it hurt. Now, it's possible it's just a filling, a filling that hurts. That's possible, too. I'm not crazy. I'm, my mind's open. That's just all it is. My mind's open. But when people hurt you, you do second guess them. I'll tell you why. The dentist office clean my teeth. The dentist was like cleaning them. I've never had them hurt this much. They were she was hurting me bad, and then she had like a gay assistant, a, a Latino guy, probably twenty six years old, twenty, somewhere in there. He was, you know, oh, hi. And of course, he was, he was gay. Okay, I don't care what, what your prerogative is. I'm a Christian. I'm not perfect. You know, I, I, I'm not going to judge anybody. As long as you're not trying to hurt me. They were hurting me, though. Now, what happened is, was it accidental or was it purposely? I almost got up and walked out. She kept saying, sometimes, sometimes, pinchy puto. And they would laugh together. And then the pinchy, uh, Gajina, the puto, and I had, there, was, there was some kind of a story where she was cussing somebody out over and over, and the laughter she had, the snicker, the cackle, was creepy. It's creepy. Super creepy. And I have to go back to the dentist's office again. After three months of peace, because now suddenly a feeling they gave me the past two weeks has been killing me. It's been hurting so much. I have to gargle mouthwash all day long. So I'm asking for prayers for anyone. Pray for me as a human being, as a fellow Christian. I'll do my own prayers. I'm going to pray directly to God himself. The Bible says do not pray to man. Do not pray to Jesus. Christ said, pray to the Father himself directly in Christ's name. We're not even supposed to pray to Jesus. I'm praying to the Heavenly Father, and I'm going to say in Christ's name, protect me. Because I don't trust that dental office, and I don't know where else to go. Okay, I don't have much time to make an appointment. This thing's hurting so bad. It's killing me. A lot of pain. And they've always been good to me there. I'm going to tell you the truth. I went there... I love that dentist place. They've been so they've been, the fillings. They they've been courteous, prompt, great job. So I'm not some crazy asshole on a on a witch hunt here. Okay, excuse my French, but when I uploaded some Illuminati videos last summer, around Septemberish, mostly about my ex girlfriend. Her name's Elizabeth. Elizabeth P. Let's just say her, Elizabeth, her name's Elizabeth P. For now, her last name begins with a P. Okay, it's a P A N. Pan. Let's say Pan. Elizabeth Pan. And I'll tell you the rest of it. And if I die, my family will tell you the rest of it. She's going up because I I know she has uh she dated a lot of cops and so I, I okay I'm, I'm I'm getting off track here. Let's just stay on track. Forget about her. When I uploaded her video, is when things started to. Come undone. Okay, I went to the emergency room in December, and they've always been good to me at Mercy Hospital. And uh, they gave me an IV, 
that made me vomit and uh, well, I can't control my bowel movements. Let's put it that way. Never did it. They never ever treated me that way before. They were, they were rude to me. They were fake. It took them four hours when I had an asthma attack to see me. Four hours to see me during an asthma attack. I mean, by the time they got in there, I was almost healed. They wouldn't give me no dinner. I had, for 24 hours, they gave me no food, no water. I had a drink from the hand sink. But if you ask the cop that came here to save me the other night, he'd tell you I'm crazy. Sorry about that. There's been a lot of weird people. A lot of freaks. See, I, I just, I'm not really into that hurting kind of people thing, you know, where people are really into hurting people. I'm just not into that. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not down with it, you know. And lately there's been a bunch of weird people that are into that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the doctor at Mercy Hospital took her four hours to come into my room. I only got back there after an hour because I fell on the floor and I tried to call an ambulance from a different hospital because they wouldn't see me. I told them I'm having an asthma attack. I think I'm going to die right now. Oh, that's very nice. Go sit down and wait with everybody else. Mercy Hospital. If, you have, if you're sick and you're not feeling good, you're in San Diego, do not go to Mercy Hospital. Do not go to Mercy Hospital. If you want to be murdered by the doctors and the nurses there, go to Mercy Hospital. Okay? Four hours. Asthma attack. Couldn't breathe till I was dying. Now, what is an emergency room for if you can't breathe and you're dying? You go there, they don't see you for four hours. Is that really an emergency room? Is that an emergency room? You'll get faster service from an ambulance. That was the beginning of it. Next was the dental thing. Okay? I went there got my, just to get my teeth cleaned. And that was hurting so bad. I almost got up and walked out. I'm, I'm a real polite person. I'd rather just sit there and say, oh, she made a mistake. Don't say nothing. I don't want to criticize. Oh, another mistake. Don't say nothing. I don't want to criticize. That's just how I am. I try to, you know, I don't ask for directions when I'm driving. I, I get lost. I just keep going in circles. Because I don't want to criticize. But she, in the end, she starts saying, puto this, puto that. This is the dentist lady. She was hurting my mouth. It was hurting so bad, I almost got up and walked out. That wasn't right. That wasn't normal. Okay, but I'm the crazy one. Right, because I'm not supposed to be upset when suddenly they're hurting your mouth. When in the past I never did before, right? Yeah. All right. Anyways, forget the doctor and them in the emergency room, the incompetence. Let's go into now. Seven nights ago. Oh, I want to say this really quick. If I go in and get this tooth pulled, and they give me some kind of medicine like anesthesia or whatever, and I die, they killed me. You understand me? They killed me. Do you understand me? Because last time I went there was a whole other treatment. They were always good to me before. This time she was hurting my mouth and saying, puto this, puto that. I'm like, is she talking about me? Because she keeps saying puto and she's hurting my mouth over and over and over. If I go there and I die, they kill me. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to. There ain't no more. I'm watching gang stalking videos where they're saying doctors are in on it, police are in on it. These are other people saying it. Now, you don't have to tell me that. I've been seeing this lately myself for the past six months. There's the Mercy Hospital with the asthma attack. Incompetence. They gave me some IV that was making me sicker, sicker, sicker. Wouldn't give me food, wouldn't give me water. 24 hours, had a bag, had a drink out of the hand sink. Then there's a dentist. I go there, get my teeth clean. It's some of the worst pain I've ever felt. Puto this, puto that. What kind of a, of, a, of a dentist works on someone's mouth? And I'm going to get her name. And her name is going up and her picture is going up. You know, why not? They do that to other people, don't they? Well, it's going up. And she hurt my mouth. Puto this, puto that. And um, I'm going there to get a tooth pulled or get this problem fixed. I don't trust that place now. But where else am I going to go? I don't have much time. Plus, you know what? I figure if it's gang stalking, it's so huge now, according to everybody else. Really, any place I choose is pretty much going to be in on it. And I'm not paranoid. <laughs> you don't know me. I'm, all, I'm actually always pretty calm. I'm pretty calm, pretty, pretty uh, together, pretty relaxed, and pretty confident. 
what's happening now is that I'm starting to get different kind of treatment. And that makes you start thinking like, hmm, you know? But okay, let's forget the treatment. Let's just say that the, this is okay. Let's play, let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate. Say the hospital was incompetent, had an asthma attack, a procedure. They wait four to five hours before they treat someone because usually when you have an asthma attack and you say you're going to die, you probably just don't die. It never happens, right? We'll go with that scenario. And let's go with the dentist scenario. She hurt my mouth and she was saying, puto this, puto that, but she wasn't talking about me. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna say those two are legit to quit. Too legit to quit, right? Let's go with seven days ago when I called nine one one, and the first two officers did not want to shine their lights behind my studio. And I said, "There's someone creeping around in the backyard. Will you please shine your light?" They went to the side of the studio only, shined their lights for three to four seconds, and took off without even saying goodbye. Asked me no questions. Now my brother pointed this part out. When I called nine one one the third time and got more police to come here and check again. Because the first two cops didn't check like they were supposed to, incompetence. And the cops came and they cornered me and they said it was me and I was, I was psycho and crazy and, and I was hallucinating and all this and that. And I better go upstairs and take what's coming to me pretty much, right? And if I call them again, they're going to arrest me themselves. My brother pointed something out. He said, you notice that when the cops came both times, he said that they never asked him, my brother, if he heard a sound or saw anybody. They never asked him, even though he was up here with me. And that cops don't normally do that. They normally separate you and they start asking you both questions. They never asked my brother if he heard anything, if he saw anything. They surrounded me, they cornered me, and they just began attacking me. Right away, before they even met me, before they even said hello, the first thing the, the officer said on the second trip, the sergeant, he said, you didn't even see anybody, did you? Did you? That was the first thing he said to me. He never introduced himself or anything. That was rude. I'm calling as a victim. I'm putting my trust into this man to come to my yard. I'm putting trust in this guy. He's getting paid taxpayers' money to serve us. When we're in danger, he's supposed to come serve us. He's the servant, not me. I'm not on the payroll. I'm a citizen. I'm an American citizen. If I'm calling for help from a cop, then they wonder why everyone's screaming murder with the police. The police want it both ways. They want to be able to kick you in the face, but then they don't want no one to say anything. When he came out here, the cop was rude to me. You start start right, right away calling me a, a lunatic, making stuff up. Like I want to be up at four in the morning making shit up. You know, I could I'd rather be there asleep counting counting sheep. My brother pointed something out the next day. He goes, you know, I did realize something though. I thought you, you were making this stuff up. I didn't know what was going on. I was gonna pack up and go. But when that nine one one third call came in, I heard that really weird voice. He said, and then he said when he heard the person bolt away. He knew there was something up. And then he said, then it, it dawned on my brother, this is what my brother told me, it dawned on him that the officers never asked him anything. Did he hear anything? Did he see anything? And they don't normally do that. They don't normally do that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm going to the dentist to get this toothache taken care of. Um, and the guy who keeps giving me a thumb down, <laughs> I, I think that when I get find out who hacked into my phone, I got the date. I'm going to get my own detective on this, a private detective. And I'm going to actually pick one and then not go to him, pick one. I'm going to I'm going to be throwing you guys off. I'll pick the one that God tells me the Holy Spirit convicts me on, and that's one I'm going to pick. When once they could tra track who hacked into my phone at 3:40 a.m. on April 18 on a 911 call. Why would someone hack into my phone and say you're not going to get any help? Right when the 911 operator came on and said 911, what's your emergency? Same time, when I find out, when I can prove that someone hacked in there, even if I can't find out who did it, if there's any kind of ripple, if they say, well, someone hacked in, we just can't find out because they covered their tracks, but someone did hack in, that's going to be evidence right there. And I'm going to tell you something else. Who's ever watching me on YouTube with their IP addresses, people that I don't, I don't know, because I'm only getting like 10 to 15 views on some of these videos, and I'm getting a thumbs down, I know that the perpetrators, my gang stalkers, are watching my videos. And their IP addresses, if their IP addresses are being blocked or not coming in, that's going to be more evidence. It's going to show you that why would someone block their IP addresses to watch my gang stalking videos? And if their IP address is showing up and it happens to be neighbors in the condos and across the street, that will be very interesting because they don't even know me, supposedly. And they don't even know my name, supposedly. And even if they do, they don't know my channel. There you go. Thanks for watching. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, mind my own business, but I am. 
a victim and I'm new at this and now I know they try to come here to kill us because they came here. Someone came around at one in the morning and was trying to be sneaky and got caught. And you don't come to someone's house at one in the morning and make your way toward their back windows unless you're planning on killing them. Okay? My lights were on. They knew we were, we were home. They knew there was people in here. And you don't come here unless you're planning on killing someone. That's how I see it. And you can shoot me through the window. So if you're trying to come inside my place, that's telling me something else. That's telling me that not only are you trying to kill, but you're trying to get access to inside my place so you can make it look like you, no one killed me. I'm thinking that you want to set it up as a suicide. That's, that's, that's just common sense. And then you want to probably put some illegal substance in my place. Well, you know, I'm telling you something right now. This is what's going on. And um, the people next door in the condos and across the street, it's, it's, it's light, it's slight, but they made some mistakes. And I guarantee you, when this is over, I'm going to be dead and people are going to know that they did it. I would never, ever, 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 ever commit suicide. And if I do, I'll have months and months of videos of me saying it first. Without a gun being pointed to my head, I won't be have a black eye or anything. But I'm not going to commit suicide. I'm not going to commit suicide. I'm not going to vanish. And I have no plan to vanish or commit suicide or hurt anybody. And I'm not going to stalk anybody. I'm not going to attack anybody. I'm not going to break any law. I might jaywalk. I might get a speeding ticket, and that's about it. So, I'm telling you, any plan you got, any plan you got, I'm telling you, anything happens to me, any everyone watching this, everyone watching this needs to know, I'm not going to kill myself, I'm not going to kill anybody, I'm not going to hurt nobody, there's going to be no perpetrator coming here for a robbery, for a TV set that's going to accidentally kill me, I'm, I, I'm being set up. By, by the next door neighbor who's, who's gang stalking me and across the street. Because I got some knowledge I came across on accident and I tried to make a deal. I said I wouldn't talk about it. Have they just leave me alone and get away from here? And their answer was to send someone to my window to try and sneak in the window and kill us. That was their answer. That's the answer I got. And I'm telling you, I got friends that are looking out for this. They're watching to see what move happens. They know I'm not going to kill myself. They know I'm not going to vanish or disappear. They know I'm not going to go attack anyone over there. I'm not going to commit no crime. I'm not going to be looking in no one's window. Nothing. Anything you say is a lie. A lie. I'm telling you, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. And when I can prove that there's real gang stalking that does exist, I don't know if the cops have files or if the FBI have files. They need to come to the American people and tell them. They need to tell the American people what's happening. Because this is happening to a lot of people out there. And I'm telling you, when I can prove this, and, and then if I ever do, I'm going to help other people prove theirs. And if I get killed, don't be afraid, you people out there, you guys go out there and you guys prove it. Buy some spy equipment. Turn the tables on them. If you really are, if you're not hearing voices from E.T. or Santa Claus, then go prove it. Prove it, and when you prove it, you bring them down, you sue this government because they're out of control. They're, they're out of control. This money that's for this gang stalking stuff is coming from the taxpayer's pocket. The taxpayers are paying for it. You think these taxpayers would be happy if they knew their money was going to torture other fellow Americans? I don't care if you like me or not. Taxpayers do not want anyone on the streets to be tortured. They believe in due process for real criminals. Now people set up with fake crimes and you guys are going to be under the microscope. for watching.